Do you sometimes feel guilty when you're spending money? In this episode, we're going to talk about how you can set up a really easy and simple budget to then spend an entire day of guilt-free spending. My name is Chris. Welcome to Heavy Metal Money. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to talk about how I used a really simple and easy budget to have my kids and I enjoy a full day of guilt-free spending at the Minnesota State Fair. This is what we call the Great Minnesota Get Together. Now this took place back in 2019, before the pandemic. The Minnesota State Fair is a pretty epic event. It's huge. We continue to break attendance records. Up until 2019, we continued to break records almost every year. 2019 was no different. We broke several daily records and an overall record with over 2.1 million people attending the Great Minnesota Get Together. In addition to so many exhibits, showcases, entertainment, and amazing foods, we actually had major headline performances at the grandstand stage every night with acts like Hootie and the Blowfish, the Bare Naked Ladies, and Weird Al Yankovic. Every year, there's tons of new food as well. This year, in 2019, there was over 80 different types of food to sample and to enjoy while you were there. Now, for years and years, I've gone to the State Fair, and it's always been a stressful time for me. It was stressful for a lot of different reasons. We would go to the fair, and it was crowded, it was hot, I'd be tired, I'd be exhausted, there'd be long lines to do pretty much anything. And to top it off, everything was expensive, like really expensive. And in the end, I would feel kind of guilty and ripped off. And so 2019 was different. I planned for it. And so I had prepared our day at the Minnesota State Fair ahead of time. I had budgeted and allocated for expenses, and I created a full day of guilt-free spending. In the past, we would drive to the fair and pay for our tickets when we got there. You know, me and my three teens. And, you know, we would get four general admission tickets. We'd walk around and then we'd kind of hesitate on, well, what should we buy to eat? You know, everything is so expensive. Should Is it worth getting something to drink? And then typically we would find food vendors and then we would swipe credit cards because we'd want to find something that had... Uh, like a square or contactless payments nowadays um, because we didn't have cash, right? And so, you know, then I'd feel kind of guilty because I had to swipe a credit card for an $8 pork chop. It just felt wrong to me. Now, in 2019, I knew that this was coming up. I planned it with the kids. So we were going to go to the fair, and we were also going to go there to see Weird Al Yankovic, which was a blast. Really fun show. So we had planned on buying cookies and checking out the butter sculptures and doing all the things that we would typically do at the fair. And what we did is this time, it started by pre-purchasing our concert tickets. So we bought our tickets months in advance for the show. So I had paid for the tickets out of my entertainment budget. I have a budget that I allocate money every month. And then when I need to buy tickets to a live concert or some entertainment, I pull the money from that budget and therefore, again, it's guilt-free. You've already allocated what that money is going to be used for. So I bought tickets for us to go see Weird Al Yankovic out of our entertainment budget. The concert was announced in January. This gave us six months to prepare, and I've officially started the Minnesota State Fair budget. So I let the kids know, hey, we're going to go to the fair, and you're going to spend the day with me at the fair. And I wanted to give them notice because, let's be honest, they're at the age where they really don't want to hang out with me. So what I used was similar to that old school envelope budgeting system. This is where you take cash every month and place it into an envelope. That envelope is geared for dining or maybe it's geared for gas for your car. Maybe it's used for groceries. Maybe you have ones that are used for um, you know, uh, automotive repair. You allocate the money into that envelope and then you pay for those expenses out of that envelope. Okay, I started saving money into a specific envelope for the state fair, literally saving the cash. You know how much cash you have. You've already earmarked that money for that expense. So when you spend it, 
there's less guilt, right? You've already allocated that money is for that particular purpose. So I created an envelope for the Minnesota State Fair. I started by putting about $40 every month that I typically would have been putting into my savings account anyway. I took that $40 every month, put it into that envelope. I then took $20 every month from my grocery budget and my dining out budget, put that $20 also into my state fair envelope, right? So now I was putting about $80 a month into this envelope for the next six months. I then paid attention to when discount tickets for the state fair went on sale. I purchased four tickets discounted at our local grocery store. This was $12 each. I immediately saved $12 just by buying them in advance. As the big day was approaching, I was really anticipating and getting excited to go to the state fair, watch all these crazy people walking around, and getting to taste all the amazing food. Again, excitement was building. When the day had arrived, the kids and I were gonna to go to the fair. Now, we didn't really get off to an early start for a couple of reasons. One, um, the kids aren't used to waking up before noon in the summer. Two, I was at the Iron Maiden show the night before. Yes, I went to go see Iron Maiden the night before we went to the state fair, and it was amazing. If you wanna see some amazing pics from the show, check out the link below. I was front row, amazing. Finally, around 11.30 that morning, we arrived at the state fair. Now, I was using Twitter to review the park and ride and parking lot statuses of the Minnesota State Fair. It was kind of crazy. In all the years that I've gone to the state fair, I had never experienced both the lots at the state fair and all the park and rides full. It was crazy. When we got there, we tried to take our chance, and the ground lots were full when we got there. It's okay, I wasn't rattled too much. We went and drove up and down the residential streets looking for a place to park. It didn't take us long to find a spot that someone was renting out of, on their lawn. This is kind of regular practice. People that live around that state fair area, they actually rent out their lawn or their driveway for people to park and they make thousands of dollars within the 12 days of the state fair. It's pretty crazy. The one we found was $20. No big deal. I had the cash. I pulled $20 out of my pocket, handed it to the guy. He directed me up. I parked right in his front lawn and we were able to get out and pay $20 for all day parking on his lawn. Another thing, we were really close to the front entrance, like literally a five minute walk. So we really made great time getting into the fair. As, as we approached the front entrance, buying our tickets ahead of time, again, saved us tons of time. We walked right past the long lines of people buying tickets to get into the fair. We already had them. The interesting thing is that even though we had record-breaking attendance that day, it really didn't seem too crowded. The weather was great. It wasn't really too hot and there was a gentle breeze in the air. It did rain just a few times, but it was relatively short and we were prepared. I had brought a backpack. In the backpack, we had a water bottle. We also brought a couple disposable rain ponchos. It was funny, we were actually stopped several times by other fairgoers asking, where did you get the ponchos? Sorry, we brought them. <laughs> now the great thing about planning ahead of time and allocating money for the day is we didn't feel guilty spending the money on any of the food and activities. This is what the money was for. So one of the first things we did, we continued to get our pork chop on a stick. We got garlic cheese curds. We got deep fried alligator. It was actually kind of fun. And I think the food actually tasted better because it didn't have the aftertaste of guilt. After a bit, my daughters wanted to go off and do their own thing. No problem. I mean, they didn't want to walk through the education building or the home improvement building or go to the health fair. Why would they? So I was able to pull out $30 in cash for each of them, give them to my, give them to my daughter, they can go off and do their own thing. They went out to get their smoothies, some cookies, and some other goodies. My son and I continued uh, to hang out most of the time together, and we got to check out other exhibits, different vendors, some rides, and we went, met up with the girls again. We got to try corn dogs, but not just corn dogs. We're talking double bacon corn dogs, and they're amazing. Probably my favorite fair food that year, hands down. As the weather started cooling down, 
we went and made our way over to the grandstand. It was getting late, and it was time for the Weird Al concert to begin. The concert was delayed just a little bit, but this gave us time to find our seats, and I was able to run over, grab a big tub of popcorn and a couple pops for us to share, and again, it was guilt-free. Sure, I had the cash already allocated. Let's go buy some snacks. In the end, the show was great. It's always a fun time to see Weird Al live. And it was one of the best times I think I've had in the fair that I can remember. It was part of it was because I was prepared and I had budgeted ahead of time. And it was also about mindset. Going in, knowing that I've already allocated money for the day, I didn't and shouldn't feel guilty about spending this money. Again, in the book, I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi, he talks about living your rich life. This was living my rich life. It seems pretty simple, right? I was able to spend a day with my kids at the fair, and it was a super fun day. So I encourage you, next time you have an event coming up, you're going to go spend the day at an event. Plan ahead of time. Schedule. Plan a budget. Allocate money ahead of time. And go into that event guilt-free. You'll have a great day. Thanks again, everyone. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. And I'll see you next time on Heavy Metal Money.